Today's video is actually viewer requested. We'll be taking a look at the i7-4790 versus the i7-4790K. Why are we taking a look at these two processors? Well, besides the slight clock speed disadvantage that the i7-4790 has, these processors are practically identical. Where they really differ though is in the pricing. On eBay and on the local used market, the 4790K holds pretty steady at about $150 to $200 whereas the i7-4790 goes for about $100 on eBay and on the local used market, you can find it even cheaper. Specifically, I found my 4790 on Facebook Marketplace for $75. So seeing as how the 4790 is half the price of the 4790K, is taking the slight clock speed disadvantage worth buying the cheaper part? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. And to make it even harder on the 4790, I'll be including the overclocked results for the 4790K in today's video, because if you're gonna be spending the extra money on the unlocked processor, you should really take into account the extra performance you can gain from overclocking that processor. Before we jump into the benchmarks, let's take a look at the test bench. Both processors were tested on an MSI Z970 crate motherboard with 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 2400 megahertz memory. Both were cooled by a Thermaltake Contact Silent 12 air cooler. It's not the best air cooler you can use to overclock, but it was the best one I had on hand, so that's what we used. Uh, both were using an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti graphics card from EVGA. Again, not the most powerful graphics card that you can use, but it was the most powerful one that I had on hand, so that's what we used. And all of that was powered by an EVGA 1000 watt power supply. Um, plenty of power for all of this hardware. So now that you know that hardware, let's jump into the results. Just a quick disclaimer before the results. We're gonna be testing at 1080p and 720p. Now I know some people don't like 720p results because no one really plays at that resolution. That's totally fair, but the methodology behind 720p results is sound. Basically, you're lowering the resolution to put less strain on the graphics card, which in turn makes the CPU work harder having to help render more frames. It would be the same methodology as testing at 4K and 1080p, two results that people do play at. But my GTX 980 Ti wouldn't get playable results at 4K, so instead we're testing at 1080p and 720p. CSGO is up first, and at 1080p you can see a 13% difference between the 4790K and the 4790. Though at 720p the gap widens to 17%. All while the overclocked 4790K gets close to 20% faster than the 4790 at 720p. With that said, even with a 240Hz monitor, you're going to struggle to notice the difference between any of these processors, seeing as how they're all outputting over 300fps at both resolutions. Devil May Cry 5 performs very well on all processors without much of a difference between the 4790K at stock versus when it's overclocked. At 1080p, we saw at most an 8% increase looking at the 4790K versus the 4790, and even at 720p, the margins stay very similar, only reaching 9% between those two again. Taking a look at the 1% lows, however, we see a nice increase of 13% going from the 4790 to either 4790K configuration. Halo Reach had some interesting results as usual. At 1080p, Halo had the biggest margins out of all of the games I tested. The 4790K was 17% faster than the 4790, and the overclock on the 4790K grew that margin to 21%. Interestingly though, at 720p, the 4790 was able to lessen those margins just a tad, bringing the overclocked 4790K down to only 18% faster. It looks like the overclocked 4790K was already hitting its limits at 1080p. Battlefield 1 is the newest Battlefield game I have to test. They told me not to buy Battlefield 5 if I didn't want to, so I didn't. At 1080p, there's no real difference, though at 720p, now we see some separation. The 4790K was 4% faster than the 4790, and when overclocked, it increased to 8%. This is about what I'd expect in most titles from the increased clocks on the 4790K and when it's overclocked. It's nothing drastic, but an increase nonetheless. Project Cars 2 is a strange game. Sometimes we get good results and sometimes we don't. It looks like in this game it didn't care too much about the increased clock speed uh, on the 4790K. 
and at most we saw a 3% increase in performance. Anything under 5% I would consider not noticeable and potentially margin of error. So Project Cars 2 looks like it'll play perfectly fine on the cheaper 4790. Warzone is a new addition to the benchmarks. Getting a similar run in this title is very frustrating with 150 players on the map. So the 1% lows is a little bit all over the place, but thankfully the average FPS was pretty consistent. At 1080p, all the processors perform basically the same, but lowering the resolutions and putting less strain on the GPU gave us some gaps. The 4790K was 9% faster than the 4790, and the overclocked 4790K increased that margin to 14%. So if you do pick up this game, make sure you have a good graphics card because it looks like it's much more GPU demanding than CPU. I'm using a better and more consistent benchmark run for Fortnite now, so the data is more reliable and much easier to benchmark than playing out the matches like I used to. Looking at 1080p, we saw a small 3% increase in average FPS going from the 4790 to the 4790K, and at 720p, the margin does increase to 6%. I believe the small increase in performance is really just down to the 4790K only hitting a max clock speed of 4 GHz, while the 4790K at stock hits 4.4 GHz, and when overclocked, we have it set at all cores to 4.6 GHz. Witcher 3 is our last game. At 1080p, we saw no average FPS increase, but the 1% lows did see a 9% performance difference between the 4790 and the overclocked 4790K. And just like Warzone, this game is much more GPU demanding than CPU, and at 720p, we saw only a 3% increase at most when comparing the 4790 to the overclocked 4790K. Cinebench is the only synthetic workload I tested. Generally, Cinebench doesn't translate exactly to the same margins you see when gaming, and when we look at the scores, we can see that the 4790K at stock scored 14% higher than the 4790. The 4790K when overclocked at 4.6 GHz managed a 21% increase in the score over the 4790. Now the only games we saw getting similar margins were CSGO and Halo Reach, and those games were the outliers, but still, higher numbers are always more fun to see. We're now going to take a look at the total average percent difference between these processors. Reason being is it's going to give you a much more rounded idea as to which processor to buy. If you were to only look at the Cinebench, CSGO, and Halo Reach benchmarks, you may say, yeah, go with the 4790K, it's 20% faster. But that's not entirely true. It's often much slower than that. So let's take a look at those charts. At 1080p, the average percent difference between the 4790 and 4790K was only 5%. Now, if we took away CSGO and Halo Reach, seeing as how those were so drastically different, that margin would fall even more into basically not noticeable territory. At 720p, the 4790K was now 8% faster on average. Looking at those results, uh, together I wouldn't say that the almost 100% increase in price buying the 4790K over the 4790 would justify an 8% increase in performance, but before we pass total judgment, let's look at the overclocked results. And well, taking a look at those results, it doesn't change much. At 1080p, when overclocked, the 4790K was only 7% faster on average. Now, lowering the resolution to 720p does increase that uh, difference to a whopping 10%. Now, again, for a 100% increase in price, you only get, at most, a 10% increase in FPS performance, which is not a fantastic trade-off. So, TLDR for everything you saw here. The i7-4790K is overpriced on the used market, as are most Intel parts, especially the unlock K SKUs. The i7 name holds a lot of brand recognition as a performance beast, but you can often get very similar performance for much cheaper by buying smarter. If you purchase the i7-4790, you can save money not only on the processor, but also on the motherboard because you're not going to have to purchase an unlocked motherboard to overclock because you can't. Also, when you're purchasing used hardware, you should always take into account what's on the new market for that same price. For instance, the AMD Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X just launched.
They're both 4-core, 8-thread processors that outperform the i7-7700K. So if you get a good deal on a 4790, which would be about $100 US, I'd say go for it. But keep in mind that with an AMD Ryzen 3 3100, there's a much better upgrade path with that processor. In the future, you could purchase a used AMD Ryzen 8 core 16 thread processor and put that in the same motherboard as your 3100 was in. But with the 4790, that's the best processor you can get for that motherboard. So you just have to be very careful and do your research, which I hope this video helped with. If you like the content, go ahead and hit the like button. If you wanna see more content from me in the future, hit subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified when I launch new videos, especially because I know my upload schedule has been pretty wacky lately. I apologize for that. I wanted to get a haircut before this whole pandemic thing happened, um, but I didn't get a chance to, so I had to wait for that opportunity. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.